Hello, as you know, my name is Kainson, the Tech Pro, and today we are going to continue from day 11 of the HackerRank 30 Days Coding Challenge. Day 11 will be 2D Arrays. The difficulty level is rated as easy, but for me, I argue that this problem should actually be medium or even hard because it's quite interesting. So the objective is that we are building our knowledge on arrays. Now, this is the context. Given a 6x6 six six 2D array A, which is given here, we define an hourglass in A to be a subset of the values with the indices falling in the pattern in the A's graphical rep representation below. Okay, There are 16 hourglasses in A, and an hourglass is the sum of, the, of, the, of an hourglass values. <coughs> Task, calculate the hourglass sum for every hourglass in A, then print the maximum hourglass sum. So let me just show you the easy, easy way to understand this problem and actually solve it. Now, if you look at my screen, you see that we have the same array we have here. Now, for each of these indices, or for each of these elements, we can create an hourglass. For this element, that's at point uh, index zero, 00, we have an hourglass going zero, 012 and an hourglass zero, 012. If we also move here, we now have another, I mean, another array going from here to here and going from here to here. So for each of these elements, we have an array, okay? And if we can calculate all the arrays in this element, then we can now, for each of this array, we can now calculate the sum of the hourglass. Now, let's say something. To be able to iterate the big array, which is the array they gave us, we use indices i and j. Now, to iterate the array inside for each of the elements, we use another two indices k and l. Now, the index i should be equivalent to the index of this element. Once you are in this place, you should be able to now move plus. So in this case, we have, we have to be adding j and k for us to iterate within this array. So what it means is if we are at index ij, if we are at index ij, we should move, we should move i j plus 1 i j plus 2 i j plus 3 so what it means is we now have to move j plus k where k is moving from 1 to 3 and the same thing goes for l so i think the best thing for us to do is to try to write the pseudocode i promise you is going to be really clear when i write it again what you have to know is that when you are moving in this big array we move only four steps because if you move beyond four steps, you cannot have a array of three by three uh, array. So we have to move one, two, three, four. And then from here we get the last array. We can't get any array from here moving this, moving further. All right, so we are going to, in this code, we are going to say first, for each of the array, we calculate the sum, and so we need to store the sums we've calculated somewhere in some list. Okay, so we are going to say for, we are now moving across the big one, so for i in range, it's going to move from 0 to 4, all right? Okay, so we have 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. Then the second one, which is moving for the bigger array, because we have not come to the internal one, for j in range 0 to 4 as well, because we are moving down, we're going to stop in the fourth position right here. Okay, now while inside this array, once for each element now, we need to calculate the sum of this internal array. So 
To keep this sum that we are going to calculate for this internal array, we are going to have, let's call it total. Because I don't like using sum, sum is a keyword in Python, so total is equal to zero. All right, so what it means that for index i and j, for index i and j, we should have one big array, or this one internal array, and that should give us this total. Once we finish with i and j and move to the next element, we should have another total for that very internal array. So at this point, we are going to start two new indices or two new subscripts. In this case, I'm going to call it K and L. So I'm going to say for K in range. Now, K has to be three items. It has to only move three steps, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. So unlike the outer array, array the inner array have to move only three steps, 0, 1, 2. So it's going to be from range 0 to 3. The range in Python is exclusive of the last um, parameter of the function, so it's 0, 1, 2. Now, when we are moving within the internal array, we have to take note that we want an hourglass shape. So we are going to exclude this and this, right? Let me just, we are going to exclude this and this. And what makes this and this uh, unique, or how we can determine what this is, is that in this portion, in this portion, K is equal to one, and j is equal to zero and here also k is equal to one and j is equal to zero so let me just write it k is equal to one j is equal to zero in this case k is equal to one and j is equal to two so wherever k is equal to one and j is equal to zero or two we are going to skip, we are not going to add it to the sum. So I'm going to say if here, if, if k is equal to 1 and yeah, so I think I, I just missed something. So we have, we have this, okay, so give me one second. All right, so we have for k is equal to range in range one to three, so we still need the last loop for i j k l l in range zero to three as well. So there we, we now have to do the check. So I'm going to say if k is equal to one and and L in either zero or two. Then we are going to skip. I'm going to just skip it by using the continue keyword. So I'm not going to add it to the total. Else, so else, I can write else, I can just write um, the code I want to write. So else is not necessary at, at this point because I'm using continuous statement. But if you want, you can just write it to see how it looks like. So I'm going to say total plus is equal to total is equal to total plus the element in question, which is take note is, go, is now going to be the array. Now the index will be it will be, take note, it will be k, let's see, i, j, so we have i, so we have this moving this way, this moving this way, so we have <coughs> i plus k, i plus k, let's, let me get this right, i plus k, i plus k, and the next one is going to be j plus L. So we have uh, IJK, K 
L. So I think I mixed up this, so let me just get it right. So let's get this right. We use this pen. So this is going to be what's moving here will be L and this moving downwards will be K. So it's going to be I plus K, J plus L. That will give us the index of the particular element in question. And finally, we are going to now append this value we calculated once we finish calculating for this internal uh, array here and that means it will be from somewhere here we are going to now say sums dot append we now add the total we calculated all right and we are done so at the end of the function at the end of everything yes we are just going to print we are just going to print the maximum of this array we've created so i'm going to print maximum of sums and that is it so that is basically it so let's go and write it and see if it's going to work so let me scroll down and let's write it and see if it works so you can actually leave the window open but for me i already know so i'm going to just write it out <coughs> So here I'm going to shift back and say sums is equal to an empty array and for i in range 4, <coughs> for j in range 4 and the total is, is, equal, is equal to 0 and for k in range 3 and for L in range 3 as well and we are going to skip the the the, the middle yeah so the first the element in the first the element in the first column and second row and element in the last column and our second row so it's going to be if k equals 1 and l in 0 or 2, 0 or 2. So this is what gives us the element we are going to skip. We are simply going to skip by using continuous statement. Else we just add the total by saying add to the total by saying total is equal to, I can use the shortcut here, total is equal to Total plus ARR I plus K and J plus uh, I plus J plus L. Okay, so at the end of the day, at the end of the day, which is at the end of the K and L, we have uh, the sum for this particular inner array and I'm going to simply append it to sums by using sums that append and then append the total and finally at the end of everything I'm going to simply print out the max of the sums and this should be it this should work so let's test it to see if it works first let me just run the code first to see what happens and you can see the first test case it passed and I'm going to now submit and let's see. All right, you can see it passed all the test cases and I think we did so well because I never knew can I, I can actually do it in a short time. So I'm going to stop here. I'd like to thank you for viewing. We just completed day 11. The next day should be day 12. And if you've come this far, thumbs up. And I'd like to also remind you to subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed. Remember, I'm Kainton the Tech Pro and I'm always there for you.